Now, we've already covered the biggest box office hits of 2021, which, to be mm. fair, it's not much in a year where everything is terrible. You That's know what true. I mean? Two years where everything's terrible, let's say. Let's say two. And if anything, you know, it's kind of like... You look at the stuff and you go, oh, that's, that's, you know, it's really good stuff. More people should have seen that. Yeah. But now, now the fun begins, James. <laughs> that's right. And look, to be fair, much of this stuff is quite good. And maybe in a different era, it would have done better. In Ooh. a different year, different era, different time period, different dimension. Different dimension, sure. But make no mistake, these are absolutely box office bombs. And to be fair, most of these probably would have bombed in a normal year, but sure, maybe yeah. just slightly less. Is there at least one of them where we're like... Yeah, I'm kind of glad that bombed, actually. <laughs> good, good, actually. We're actually. happy with that one. Now, look, just to roughly talk numbers up top as an explainer, most movies, but not always, it can go, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in this. They need to double their budget to make their money back because of marketing. That is not a hard and fast rule, but we don't have marketing numbers, so that's what we go from, isn't it? It's a complex system of undisclosed <laughs> information that we do not have. We're just going to guess at it. We're just yeah. going to reckon at it. Exactly. I'll also say this, the number one... I mean, last year it was Quibi. It's a pretty big one this year. Oh. I wouldn't say it's as big, mm -hmm. but it's, boy, it's a it's a kick in the nuts. Very excited for this. Okay. And number 13, The Eternals cost $200 million to make, and it made $396 million. Uh, it is the lowest theatrical MCU movie since Captain America, The First Avenger. Whoa. So even though it looks as if it may have just made its money back. It's squeaked in. It's a squeaker. Barely. Mm. But if you look at that... And then you look at, say, there is no official sequel in the works. They have talked about how, mm. oh, we plan to roll over sexy Star Fox guy into a different movie yeah, or whatever. Right, right. But there's no, like, Eternals 2 is coming, get ready. That's true. So I think that speaks volumes to this. That's wild that it hasn't made much money, but everybody's still talking about it. Just kidding, no one's talking about <laughs> it. Talking Every, about people it. stop talking about it. Look, this is one I think in another year it would have definitely done better. But I think it wasn't enough to get people to cinemas. It wasn't that compelling a story. It didn't do well even like critically. The word of mouth wasn't great and we just ended up here, didn't we? Yep. We but it had a big stone spaceship, didn't it? I, I, yep, it did. How much do you think that accounted for uh, the box office revenue? All of it, I think. <laughs> just big stone spaceship fans. They haven't seen anything big and ambiguous and stony since 2001 A Space Odyssey. They're raring to go. He is not wrong. At number 12, we got Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Has that just come out quite recently? Who knows? Uh, okay. It cost $25 million and it made $31 million. Okay. Uh, now, look, to be fair, I haven't seen it. Mm. Also, to be fair... It has been called probably the best adaptation that we've seen of that source material into live action. In the sense that they've attempted to yeah. adapt literally any element of the games. They should have just called it, fine, we'll do the games. We'll do one of the games. Fine, everybody's going to have a big, like their shoulder's going to come out, a big eyeball's going to come out of their shoulder. Fine. And you're going to go, Ugh! hope somebody's got a rocket launcher. But I think it's probably one of those situations where... Oh no, I used my rocket launcher on regular zombies earlier. <laughs> I just used all my rocket launcher. I thought I was going to get some more rocket I launchers. I thought I'd come into the room, the, just the room before I went to the guy with the big eyeball, it was going to be a bunch of rocket launchers yep, just yep. sitting there and there wasn't. <laughs> I hope there's, I haven't seen it, but I hope there's a scene in the movie where it's just a main protagonist just plinking at a giant monster with a handgun. Yeah. And then they run out of bullets and they're like, do I use a, the knife? Yeah. I guess, I don't know. I hope they fight the big snake in the mansion. Yes. Again, we haven't seen it. And look, this is a big loss for Sony, I guess. Not huge to be fair mm. they but didn't yeah they've no, they, that's a low budget yeah that's and also like they have spider-man so yeah they don't care <laughs> they uh, uh they decided to not add an additional craft services table to the spider-man <laughs> no way home budget and instead made resident evil with that money exactly uh number 11 we got the boss baby family business still bossing still bossing uh 82 million dollar budget made 142 million so mm -hmm. below where it's supposed to be who's the voice of the boss baby is it alec baldwin, alec baldwin it is yeah. alec baldwin who's the boss who's the voice of the lady boss baby probably tina fey but i honestly oh, don't that know that would make a lot of sense yeah. here's the thing about the boss baby uh franchise mm -hmm. it was never supposed to be so it should not be a thing that you try to expand out into other media. Oh, yeah. It's a TV show. It's getting sequels. They're releasing it in a pandemic year. This is not supposed to occur, okay? Mm, yeah. I haven't seen any of them, but you, you knew this was going to happen, right? Mm, I think it may be a case of bad worth, word of mouth because as I understand it, He's not even really a boss. He's more a spy or something. Or something. Okay. So I think the boss baby's more of a spy. They should have, should have called it spy babies. I think, I think there maybe, is a movie called Spy but Babies. But I think maybe boss baby tested really well. And they're like, yeah. well, we can't change it now. Absolutely. Uh, in at number 10, Dear Evan Hansen. 
Yikes. So uh, twenty eight. <laughs> I've heard nothing but bad things. <laughs> twenty eight million dollar budget made eighteen point six. I guess when you make a movie about a human parasite who siphons the grief off a family. Also, um, there's the age thing where he looks like a ghoul. Um, <laughs> Brutal. I, I think all of these things <laughs> added up to like this is odd. He looks like a man of our age. Yes, which is to say a ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> He's also 10 years younger than us. But it's interesting because if you see him in real life, he looks younger than he did in the movie. That's why. Like, I don't know what's happening here. And just the idea of a guy tricking a family and the sister of a boy who killed himself and then he, like, weasels his way in. Like, that's no mm. thank you. Awful and no. And now that you've explained the plot of the movie so evocatively, nobody's going to go and see it because it's like they've already seen it just now. That's so true. It's exactly. not going to make any more money now. But here's something I did actually... I hope you're happy, James. Yeah, I am actually. Yeah, me too. It's a lesson learnt mm. uh, at number nine. Here's something I did actually want to see. House of Gucci. It cost $75 million and it made $95.6 million. Uh, there are two Ridley Scott movies that are going to appear on this list. So this one, I feel like it's got an amazing cast uh -huh. and an interesting story. And a Lady a, Gaga, A Lady example. Gaga and Adam Dravar. Mm. And it made me genuinely interested in, in seeing this movie and like think it, like it's beautiful and the fashion and the people. But also like Jared Leto is like... Mamma mia, I'm, uh, I'm having a good time and whatever. And I look, I'm not saying that caused this movie to bomb, but mm -hmm. it certainly didn't help, did it? You're saying too authentic. All I'm saying is I'm not an actor and I could have done that. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's right. Mamma mia, this a fabric is a good. It's for, it, anyone could do that. James, stop playing clips from House of Gucci and just do do your Italian accent, all right? Uh, sorry, apologies. Kind of a shame, that one, I feel. Well, here's one that didn't do super well and also I don't want to see it. Uh, number eight, we've got The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Oh, yeah. Uh, cost 70 uh, million, it made 70, and I've just written here, who cares? What? Like, this is a franchise that kind of, the promise of it and the premise and the people in it, I'm like, yeah. cool. But just, I, there's just something about it where I'm just like, I just... I don't. I don't want this. Do you think at a like a movie production company, you you throw a little party if you if your movie makes exactly zero dollars? Oh wow, you might. Yeah. yeah right? I mean, a party with a zero dollar budget. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> so in the break room, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah, whatever's in the fridge. That's right. Exactly. You put a candle in your your Chinese takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> at number seven, we've got Encanto. Cost one hundred fifty million dollars. It's only made one hundred and fifty eight million. Um, I feel like this one definitely would have done better in a different year because it's yeah, it's sure. a pretty it's a pretty solid story. It's like it's it's beautifully animated. It's got some good songs, mm -hmm. but I think you can take your kids. You can take your kids, but also there's so much on streaming at the moment. And mm -hmm. you know, in the midst of like a year like this, do you go to a cinema? Or do you stay at home? Do you know it's what I mean? Yeah. And I can understand this. In, at home, you've got leftover Chinese takeaway. And at number six, we've got everybody's favourite origin movie, Snake Eyes. The budget is reportedly... The fact that it's made any list at all is kind of amazing to me. <laughs> you just think it was just going to drop off? Yeah, just disappear, sure. Look, to be fair, I nearly didn't put it in because I just forgot. The budget of between 88 and 110 million, it only made 40.1. One, I like Henry Golding. I think the that's same, a good yeah. choice as Mr. Snake Eyes. But I feel like if you're going to launch a franchise... Please, it's Dr. Snake Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's an ophthalmologist. It's Oh, that's good. It's that's nominative good. determinism. Yeah, that's yeah. very good. I like that a lot. If you're going to launch a franchise like this mm -hmm. and you're starting with an origin yeah. for a series of movies that kind of never did hugely well in a property that hasn't really been as popular as it was since the 80s, mm. it has to be better than whatever this was. Yeah. And look, we've done a podcast on it or we're, com we're going to do a podcast on it, aren't we, Mason? That's right. We're very excited to finally cover that, <laughs> this epic cinema experience. That's it. Because, you know, you want to go into that and be like, I wasn't really expecting that much and it had insane action and the performances yeah, yeah. were good, but what have you heard about Snake Eyes? Nothing. Exactly. Number five, The Last Duel. Cost $100 million. Made $30.5 million. This Ridley is, Scott, busy boy. This, well, I think one of these was probably pushed back. Yeah, right, right, right. Due to factors. But Ridley Scott has come out and he said famously, millennials are too busy on their phones and their Facebook. James, if I might correct you. Yeah. He said millennials. Oh, millennials. Thank you very yeah. much. And so that's why they're not seeing my movie. Which, to be fair, I've seen it. And, you know, I quite enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It's a good kind of historical epic, whatever. You know, it's pretty solid. But millennials aren't really on Facebook. <laughs> They're, like, there are movies that have done well this year. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think maybe nobody wants to see a, a medieval night movie. A lot of millennials um, in their late 30s have kids. Yep. And they, they want to take them to see Encanto. But they didn't. They didn't do that either. <laughs> Next up we've got 
four is a big one. Uh oh. Chaos Walking at number four. One hundred million dollars. It made twenty five point four million. Now this is the Tom Holland Daisy Ridley movie, which they shot in twenty seventeen. Yeah. Which when which when you look at that on paper, you take those two. They were both in hot franchises. Yep. It's also a young adult fantasy novel or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody can see each other's thoughts or something. James, specifically, it's a it's a it's a world where there are only boys. There are no girls. But then a girl shows up. But also, your thoughts show up in in front of you. Yeah. They, they appear in you <laughs> like a bubble or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, it was. There's a snake in your mind or something. Sa- yeah, because if you think of a snake, you can see the snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after with the a premise like that, with the straightforward <laughs> premise like that, no girl planet, but you can see you the can things see a in snake. your mind. You can see a mind. snake in your mind. Yeah. Why wouldn't that be a hit? Well, because uh, after its initial filming, it was deemed unreleasable. <laughs> no. So it got very expensive reshoots, and this is the official quote: "We wouldn't be shooting more if we didn't think we could make this movie work." It didn't. Didn't work. And honestly, pretty amazing they didn't deem it un- unreleasable Second before, they made, it, before, <laughs> before they made it. Before they made it. Before they made it, when they wrote the script. You can never know. It's true. You can never know. This one's a bit surprising at number three. West Side Story cost $100 million. Now, we do actually have a hard number on how much this needed to make. When I say hard number, it was estimated... A big old guess. <laughs> ...that it needed $300 million to break even. Whoa. And it made... 19 million dollars a lot less a this lot is less. A, um this is a spielberg movie and it got yeah. an excellent reception is it out worldwide i don't think it's i out believe where we're, so is that where we're from yeah i couldn't tell you to be honest. i'm pretty sure it, yeah no my wife saw it no oh, it, nice. did, it definitely okay, came out right, right. but it feels to me and she paid a million dollars that's right <laughs> this is my reasoning behind it mm-hmm. it's kind of antiquated and i think in another year where like uh, the greatest showman does well yeah, maybe right, it, mm-hmm. maybe it like slowly chugs along to uh-huh. that. But people are doing a Hamilton. People are doing a tick, tick, boom. I'm talking specifically about Lin Manuel Miranda, obviously. So I think maybe people see this and they go, Is this, isn't this old or whatever? Sure. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know, to be honest. And is it worth rushing out to see this thing which already exists? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. apparently, though, it is like the definitive version of this show. So there are other filmed versions, but this is the one that you should say. Do you think maybe people thought, I mean, I could watch two men like tie their hands together with a silk scarf and knife fight? Or I could go out in the world and experience that for myself. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Have a lovely time in the out of doors. <laughs> That's it. Uh, at number two, I've just written here, minor misses. Here's some minor misses. Like okay. Stillwater, uh, relatively low budget, didn't do super Which well. What was that again? Uh, the Matt Damon one. Uh, Cry uh, Macho. These are just some bits uh, and pieces. They kind of fit sure, anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it went to HBO Max, which I do want to talk about. Because coming in at number one, is HBO Max and all its releases in general. Oh no, everything. And I'll tell you why. This okay. is the big this is the big loss. James is going to tell us for why. That's right. So, the subscribers that this brought in mm-hmm. were not great. Okay. So you're not getting ongoing You mean in quality wise in terms of their personalities. No, no, no. <laughs> they're, they're oh, they're all wonderful. Right. Uh, you know, they're not getting in enough people to justify these big budget movies going mm. there. And the box office also didn't reflect that because it was both. All of these movies went to cinemas and went straight to streaming. They actually lost in quarter three 1.8 million subscribers somehow. Okay, somehow sure. that ha- they lost money wow. in a year where they're putting out a monkey versus a lizard, which yeah. to be fair, of all the ones that probably did the best. A big monkey versus a big lizard, yes. no less. Um, Tom and Jerry, Mortal Kombat, Space Jam A New Legacy, in the Heights, The Suicide Squad, Zack Snyder's Justice League, for example, cost $70 million, but didn't probably bring that in numbers because they're not continuing it. The Matrix Resurrections cost $200 million and is currently bombing itself into oblivion. Reminiscence. Remember that one? Yeah, where Hugh Jackman remembers his memories somewhat. <laughs> yeah, that's what he thinks it. about his memories. So I think, as I mentioned, some of these did better than others numbers-wise. Mm. You know, they're not all complete flops. But what they've done here, they basically left billions of dollars on the table which they could have made. Mm. And I think they made the decision also because they didn't think cinema was going to come back at all yeah, right. this year. But at the very least, I think the filmmakers would just be happy that uh, you know, people no, are getting Mason. eyes on their movies. Oh, Mason, no, you're very They're much... They're like, oh, we don't mind if they start making money as no, long as no, people no, are no, seeing no, them. No, 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 I'm just no. glad people are seeing Tom and Jerry. <laughs> people are seeing, I've put all my heart and soul into Tom and Jerry. Yeah, so look... I think it probably made them some money, but in the long term, this is a huge hit. It made uh, them some money. Did it make us any money? No, it didn't make us any. I, mean, I don't I care. Guess this I, don't video, care about, I, guess. I don't care about their loss. Okay, cool. Yeah, because if you look at, for example, other streaming platforms, some of them did better. So, for example, Disney Plus, they released like a Cruella, which did like 
okay streaming numbers mm-hmm. and an okay box office. Not great, but yeah. good enough that it's getting a sequel. Jungle Cruise, for example, cost $200 million. It made $220 million, but it also went to streaming. Yeah, that's true. So, and it is getting a sequel, and that is an indication that people are interested. The Tomorrow War on Amazon Prime, it's... Getting a sequel. Coming to America. How did that do? I don't know. The Cinderella <laughs> movie with James Corden. We got that awful viral video. That's something, isn't it? That's right. You know That's what I mean? worth it. All these losses worth it for that alone, I think. What about the movie Finch? It went to Apple+. Plus. I enjoyed it, but did it make money? I have no idea. My point is, <laughs> a lot of the streaming numbers are hidden, and it just seems like... A bit of a, a, bit of a few a few people f- fumble in the bag this year. They're if you know absolutely what I mean. fumbling that Some bag. Some definitely more than others. Yeah, that Hollywood term, fumbling that bag. Fumbling the bag, as they say. <laughs> now, this looks like it's probably going to be the final video of the year. We're taking a bit of a break in January. There's going to be some old stuff I'm going to repackage and throw up. Don't <laughs> even terrific. worry about it, mate. Nice. Do not even. So, worry if you're about like, it. God, I'm so I'm so exhausted in this holiday time. I don't even want to just click on the Mr. Sunday Movies tab and then scroll down. Yeah. And watch an old thing. They'll be you don't there. Have you don't to. have to scroll down at all. We actually have a subscription service where we do podcasts and audio commentaries and a bunch of early videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, normally, not in January, obviously. Right. But there's a huge back catalogue of stuff, which is exclusively available there at BigSandwich.co. If you you know, you would like to listen to any of that, we're not going to stop doing stuff there. So that's going to keep going that's through. Right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. Merry Christmas New holidays New and New, New, New Year's and all those things. It's past Christmas. Yeah, I know, but I haven't seen everybody since then. Oh, okay. So. Good, good. Yeah. So all that stuff. Yeah, this counts for next year as well. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you soon. Okay, Okay, bye bye. everybody.